Welcome to Bamford Rose and it's forum chat time. This week is a quick focus, a quick check on Warranty Watch. This is where we take an issue that perhaps an owner has needed some help with, where perhaps the franchise network didn't fix this particular concern under warranty. As viewers of this channel will know, we recommend that the best place to purchase a car from is a franchise dealer, get the bells and whistles purchase experience out of it, and get the factory warranty as a safety net to help you through any niggles that you might have with the car post-purchase. Because that's only a slither of a few quid above uh, independent resellers, then why go to the independent reseller and get much less of a customer experience and products and services? But if it turns out in purchase that a few niggles aren't being fixed by that warranty policy, then we need to know about this, build up a database of what seems to be covered and what isn't. I know from feedback that it's been told to a few owners that manufacturing defects is not covered by that warranty policy. So a manufacturing defect is going to be something that so regularly goes wrong, it just causes alarm bells on somebody's graph, meaning that rather than bad luck, it must be a manufacturing defect and a good old underwriter wriggles out of covering those liabilities. So I've heard of clutch pipes. These are low pressure pipe kit on the ASM gearbox. Suspension wishbone arms, lamps, seemingly being categorized as manufacturing defects and not covered. So if the list of items that aren't covered starts to grow, it really will question if the bells and whistles services and products that you get from buying franchised is really worth it. Now, this particular problem surprised even me because I've not heard this before. So this is a clip from a second generation Vanquish. And everything when you start from cold was as you'd expect. Engine sounds normal, everything behaves, no concerns. Here's a clip now from the engine when it's warmed up and there is a characteristic ticking, tapping sound. Now obviously it's very difficult to diagnose problems remotely, but this sounded like it was happening at twice engine speed, which would indicate that it's a valve train issue. Certainly does sound similar to hydraulic lash adjusters, and if there was no ticking from cold, that would be another indication that when the oil is thick, that there, it was valve lash adjusters. This particular owner had got the fob off from the dealer that it was an emissions piece of kit related issue, uh, nothing to worry about and given the keys back and told to go on his merry way. Hence the video landed on my doorstep. Well, clearly this is not normal because every single Vanquish ever made doesn't sound like this. Perhaps this is where the franchise dealer is hindered in that that extended warranty policy will only cover a breakdown and in their opinion the car wasn't broken down so they wouldn't be able to get the warranty company to cover this repair. I think this is a tough grey line because clearly something isn't right here. So whether it's fixed now, when the fix will be the least it possibly could or whether it's fixed in the future, I think it's irrelevant because a fix is inevitable. And it's better to fix it now when the cost to fix will be the lowest because you know, it's risking subsequential damage if you allow something to wear to destruction. Just from the video, I was actually more 
thinking that it was an engine related problem and this comment that it was emissions system related was not true. So the customer going back to the dealer not accepting the fob off, they did a little bit more diagnostics and I saw a video where the exact ticking sound uh, was stopped by disconnecting the purge valve. Every time the purge valve was disconnected electronically, the noise would disappear. And every time it was reconnected, it would start happening again. So this is really good because from what sounded like on a video to be base engine, it turns out to be something on the periphery and this emissions system related device. Very quickly, the purge system takes the gases that the petrol is venting in the tank. Obviously, it's not allowed to vent them to atmosphere. It runs them through a charcoal canister and then through a valve meters that gas into the inlet manifold. That way, the engine is consuming the gases which are harmful to the environment that the car is giving off. And instead of cycling as it should have done, this valve was just erratically opening closing, causing the ticking sound. So after going back to the dealer with the comment, you know, this clearly isn't normal. Every vanquish doesn't behave like this. This car got fixed, so all's well that ends well. Now we're on to a quick question about B8 ASM clutch wear. Now I have seen a few inspection sheets from dealer at point of sale and a load of tick items for paint interior and all that sort of stuff. At the end of that check sheet, I have seen a box for clutch wear but it's seldom filled in. And owners have contacted me asking what is the limits, the start point, the end point for a clutch so that they can get the dealer to declare what that clutch wear figure is and know how much life is left in the clutch. Now it depends on manufacturing tolerances on how much metal, how much meat is on the block, on the torque tube and dimensions of the clutch exactly. So the start point can vary. In terms of bit counts, then I would say a clutch start point of 1250 off the AMDS system is about correct. I'd say that 1800 or over is risking a breakdown at any point. And if it were my car, I'd certainly be wanting to change the clutch if the figure was greater than 1800. But in my experience, cars with clutch wear figure of greater than 1800 tend to get themselves taken to a garage before they fail because the drivability is just so poor. I'd say 1750 was about the end of clutch life uh, in reality, meaning that if you see a figure of something like 1500, then you're 50% worn. But it's not as simple as that. There are other factors at play. Yeah, uh, one of the problems that single plate clutch has is that the spring pack on the diaphragm cover wears, meaning that the stroke that the slave cylinder goes through to clamp and release is a lot longer and this causes issues as well as the maximum clutch wear point. So I'd get in the car and drive it and drive it in the car park, just go from first to reverse, do a few pullaways, give it a little bit of throttle as you pull away, not too much, just a leisurely pull away. And you wanna be feeling a nice creep forward with it being quite smooth. If you give it a little bit of throttle and as soon as it tries to move forward, it, it feels like it's gonna stall and the drive is quite jerky, then that's a clutch that's probably at end of life. If the wear point is reported back as being something like 1650, 1700, then that's a clutch that needs renewal, certainly at your point of purchase, rather than someone saying, hey, it's between 50 and 60% worn. Whether it's twin plate or single plate, if you put a new clutch in the ASM car, then to start with, the single plate will drive quite nicely, it will drive quite smoothly. Obviously a twin plate clutch drives smoothly for a lot longer and performs better for a lot longer. But initially that single plate clutch, if new, does drive really, really nice. So if you get in the car and do a clutch learn, pull away, and it's pulling away either trying to stall or it's really jerky, then regardless of any clutch wear data, then I'd be worried about the state of that clutch. Hope you like that warranty watch. It really helps us if you can click us a like, subscribe to our channel. And if you have any warranty watch videos, questions, concerns of your own, then we'd love to hear from you. 